In the United States, Hispanic heritage has been celebrated since 1988 by a presidential proclamation that Ronald Reagan signed into law. This annual month-long celebration recognized the many contributions and traditions that Hispanic and Latino Americans has given to the United States. And right here in Marion County, we have our very own award-winning top Hispanic educator for 2014, Maria Gonzalez. At the September last year, there was an email from the governor stating that it was Hispanic Heritage Month. And so anybody could nominate a teacher, a principal, a co-worker, a student. And so Ms. Street had asked if I would be interested in, in something like that. And so she nominated me. I came from Cuba. I came to this country when I was four years old. Things were different back then. There was no ESOL classes, so you had to struggle through school. And mom and dad didn't speak the language, so I struggled through school a whole lot more than other people did. So I, I did a lot of reading twice and three times to be able to understand what I was doing. I had good teachers, they helped me, but at home I was on my own. And then even though math was a universal language, I was okay through the elementary years, but when we got into middle school, 2,560. Anna and Kyla, how do you represent 2,000? So for me it was hard. I had to work the extra assignment, do the extra practice, study a little harder than most kids did. And so I try to do as much as I can in the classroom to make them feel comfortable to help them. And, I, and that's how I carry my award. I think of what an opportunity I had and I think of education and how important it was to me. Steven Williams Ortega is the second of two Merit Scholar semifinalists at Vanguard and he remembers worrying about how he did at the start of this journey. I mean, I wasn't really expecting it because it's, it's a funny story that the first time I took the PSAT, not last year, but the year before, I got a, like a 216 or something on it, and I was a little worried uh, last year when we were about to take it for the second time because I was saying, you know, I did pretty well the first time. Um, what if I go down? And, and everyone, 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 like 20, 20 people, everyone I told were like, no, that's not going to happen. You're gonna, you know, you can never go down. You can only go up and score. Like it's just, it's not possible. He did make it to semifinalist status and made some very important people very happy. It, it was just really, really, really awesome to get that paperwork, to hear that, to um, be able to tell my dad and hear how genuinely excited he was, as opposed to, you know, sometimes we'll be like, well, I got this, and he doesn't really understand what it is, so he'll be like. Oh, that's that's really cool. But like this, he knew he definitely knew about, um, and 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 uh, basically being able to make him and my mom like uh, really proud, really happy. That was that was maybe like my favorite part. He has been able to stay calm and hopeful through this entire process. I'm not a super nervous person. I try to be pretty laid back, uh, but there is always that you know. Well, now I have a, an opportunity, and I just I really hope I don't blow it because it'd be really nice to, um, to succeed in this instance. We want to constantly remind our community where we live that America is becoming more and more diverse each and every day. To that end, the school district strongly supports the One Ocala, One America program, now in its 13th year. While it's a City of Ocala event, the school district can't help but be involved. The school highly endorses this initiative because it involves the entire community. And of course, you know, being a school district, we represent a very large piece of the community, our children. We have a number of our children involved in an event that we're conducting at MTI Auditorium, where a lot of the kids will be performing and displaying and showing off their arts, uh, performing arts ability. Uh, dinner will be served at that. That is the only event, by the way, that we will have a fee. And then, of course, on that Thursday, we have what we call kids uh, taking place at the Krosky Center on Martin Luther King, which is always a big, big event. Kids, kids involved in diversity. That's what that stands for, where we have kids from all of our schools coming over for just a fun field event of diversity, fun games, food is provided. It's just uh, several hours of just good hardcore fun, bringing our kids from all over together. An empty desk can lead to an empty mind. If you aren't in school, how can you learn? 
Marion County Public Schools has launched Attendance Matters, a campaign to stress the importance of being in class every day. Last year, over 17% of elementary students missed at least 10 days of class. At the middle and high school levels, it was nearly 20%, and it's getting worse. Attendance has gone down at elementary and middle school levels each of the last three years. And it's surprising how quickly absences add up. If you miss just two days a month, that adds up to 18 days, a full 10% of the school year. The goal of Attendance Matters seems small, raising attendance district-wide by just a single percentage point. But in Marion County, 1% higher attendance is 430 more students in class learning. Schools throughout the district will stress attendance and those students on the brink of chronic absenteeism will be especially focused on. You can find out more by visiting either of these websites. Attendance matters to this graduate of Marion County Public Schools. Common Core, Florida Standards, New Math, whatever you call it, it can be baffling to parents trying to help their students learn. To demystify it, the district's Title I department recently hosted Lunch and Learn, a series of age group specific sessions to help parents be able to help their children. In 1969, I attended kindergarten, and at the tender age of 51, almost 52, maybe I needed to refresh my mathematical ability so that I could be more effective at uh, helping my daughters do uh, what they need to do, and that's uh, learn how to skin their own mathematical cats. And since there's more than one way to skin a cat, parents got multiple strategies to use with their children. I was extremely pleased uh, with the different methods that she showed us, how we could help our child understand, since every child learns differently. So she gave us several different options on how to make them understand multiplication tables. About 150 parents attended the training, and the two we spoke to couldn't say enough about how beneficial it was. It is so revolutionary. The tools and the techniques that the, the great teachers are teaching me in order to be more effective as a parent when we sit down to actually double check the homework. So knowing the latest information based on the latest science that these teachers are telling us about effective methods to teach mathematics to my elementary school kids, I can't quantify my appreciation. It was definitely worth my time today. It was excellent. The two parents you just met heard about the training thanks to Skylert. Well, what is that? And maybe you've heard that in the recent days. Skylert is actually our new communications platform from both the district and the school level. It allows us to share important information with you, the parent, the grandparent, the other caregiver, all of that information that is important to you and important to our students. This platform actually allows us not only to communicate with your cell phone or with your home phone, but also with text messages and with emails and also on Twitter, one of the social media platforms. So we're able to share information in a multitude of ways with you, but you have to make sure that you have provided that correct information, the most up-to-date contact information to your child's school. Otherwise, we may be calling your old cell phone number, which means you would never get that message. So again, I stress the importance. Make sure your child's school has the current telephone number, cell phone number, texting phone number, and your current email address on file. We would like to thank the more than 225 different individuals, organizations, and companies who donated to our schools last year. Combined, you contributed just over $1 million to help our students and teachers. Here's how some of that money was used. Thanks to your donations, close to 100 high school juniors were able to visit up to 10 area businesses and colleges to prepare for their future. They were able to practice their interview skills with local area leaders and take a financial literacy workshop training. Without your donations, the program Pathways to Prosperity would not exist. Thank you for your donation. How can you give away money and put more money in your pocket? By buying a Coupons for Education book. The $20 you spend stays at your child's school. And last year, district schools raised a total of $180,000. In return, you get coupons worth more than $3,000 at restaurants, retail stores, golf courses, and so much more. So get yours today.